Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but through King Jesus. In this video, I want to talk briefly so that the video is shareable and in a um, easily understood format. I want to specifically address abortion in this video. What is termed abortion is inappropriately applied. It's applied out of context. The baby in the womb is living. Women talk about it. I'm eating for two now. In America, they call the murder of a pregnant woman double homicide. In 1983, the Irish Constitution acknowledged the right to life of the unborn baby. I prefer the term preborn. The Irish Constitution acknowledging this was entirely unnecessary. But it speaks to, when you use the term acknowledging, you, you speak to its antecedent existence. You're only acknowledging it in writing. It already, it already was in effect. You've just acknowledged it. The right to life of the pre-born baby has already been protected by law. Prior, or pre-1983, when they claimed that the Irish Constitution newly acknowledged it. So, what is the, na the nature of the right to life? This is very and vitally important to understand. The right to life is, by, by nature, an imprescriptible right. That's I-M-P-R-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-I-B-L-E. -E. Imprescript. Then extract script, S C O R I P T. Script means text written, a scribe, a scribe writes, don't they? It's a writer. Imprescriptible means cannot be removed from the text, cannot be written out. It also means cannot be given away. An imprescriptible right is one that cannot be given away by any mean, means or mode, especially acknowledging the inability to remove it from anything in writing. So the right to life of the adult is one that's imprescriptible. Therefore, if the Irish Constitution acknowledges that the baby has in the womb the right to life, obviously then it is assumed that it's an imprescriptible right. Because the, the native um, pretext to the right to life is that it is imprescriptible, is that it is antecedent, which means it pre-existed even the Irish Constitution is that it's inviolable, it cannot be violated, it's inalienable, it cannot be made suddenly an unnative right, or a, a right that's not innate, or, or um, a right that is um, not self-evident. So then we say, well, hold on a second, the TV said clump of cells. Okay, well, the TV says lots of things. Do you abandon... Uh, secular science and the constitution of the country to extrapolate meaning? No, oh, you refer to it. Well, the Irish constitution says, and very briefly, very quickly, it says in its preamble, which is enshrined in the Irish constitution and the foundation of it, in the name of the most holy trinity, that's the God of the Bible, 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and these three are one. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Both the scriptures. Both verses from the Bible. In the name of the Most Holy Trinity, from and to whom is our final end, all actions, both of men and states, plural, must be referred. This means that we refer to the Bible, the text, for its definitions and to structure society. Well, the imprescriptible right to life of the preborn baby is one that is extant, therefore. So I ask you a question. Let's employ simple logic. If a right to life is imprescriptible and I cannot write it out of something, how then can you call a referendum to remove it? Referendum is writing. You're ticking a box. How can you write it out of existence? It's imprescriptible. If the right to life is imprescriptible, it cannot be written out. Antecedent, inviolable, inalienable, imprescriptible. That's the nature of the right to life. These are definitions that go along with the right to life. So a referendum can never be brought to remove it. That's a facade. And it should be uh, um, recognised as such. It's not founded in the Constitution of Ireland. It can't be founded in any constitution, neither America. Why? Because the, 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 even the Constitution of America says these self-evident rights, these that are self-evident, so the right to life of the preborn baby is scientifically self-evident. That means that it has been recognised and still is recognised by modern secular science. I'm talking about science that may not, may or may not have a Christian rooting. But that it actually, even though it may not have a Christian rooting, must acknowledge what is visible. Because they apply and employ the scientific method which says that something must be tested more than one time and shown to be the, have the same result each and every time. Well, we look, therefore, to the nature of the bloodstream. We say, well, the bloodstream carries the blood, and the blood specifically carries oxygen to the cell. Well, if a baby has blood, they have life, then. The Bible states this in Leviticus 17 and 11. And remember, the Irish Constitution refers to the Bible for its definitions. Leviticus 17 and 11. The life of the creature is the blood therein. Well, I ask you, if secular science and the Bible agree on this, why doesn't the Society of Ireland submit to the law on this matter? Why is the government acting treasonously bringing referendums to remove an imprescriptible right. If the baby in the womb has oxygen in its veins, it's living. The, the mummy says, I'm eating for two. That's a living being in the womb. You want to pull its head and legs off, throw it in the trash and say this is family planning, scientific progress. This isn't in line with science. Because science acknowledges that blood in the body is life in the body. That blood coursing the vascular system of the baby, the, the baby has a vascular system. The vascular system of the baby is oxygenated when the blood is coursing. You want to say that's a clump of cells? It has, a, it has an, a vascular system. It's not a clump of cells. So we see that the Irish Constitution has been offended in more than one place. It, the law has been broken in more than one place. We see that media has been used in such a way that has miseducated the masses. And the Constitution of Ireland says that the instruction of the public is of such grave import that the modes of um, 
accessible to the media must not be abused in miseducating them. That public opinion is so important to the integrity of society that it should be preserved by paying careful attention to what is allowed to be disseminated through the media. Well, they're putting out there that the uh, baby in the womb is merely a clump of cells. A clump of cells. That it doesn't have life yet because it hasn't been gone through the birth canal. This isn't scientifically sound definition as to what life is. That's preposterous. That defies basic biology. The blood brings oxygen to the cell. Imprescriptibility is, means that a right cannot be removed by writing. Referendum is the public coming into right. That defies the law of this land. It's an, it's an act of high treason on, on the part of the government. There's no escaping that. It's an act of high treason. And it is an abandonment of the Constitution to bring a definition that defies both the biblical definition and the secular scientific definition, which don't disagree. They agree on this matter. That the life of the creatures is blood therein. So why are the media allowed to, on such a massive scale, disagree with both the biblical and scientific secular viewpoint on this subject? When the Constitution of Ireland in Article 40 preserves the integrity of, of, of the material being disseminated by the media as having to be screened and carefully and governed and watched. So it's in the in the Constitution Article 40 that what is going out through the media is of such grave import to the public opinion that it should be watched carefully. But why wasn't it? Why, why were the government bringing a um, referendum, bringing a referendum to remove an imprescriptible right to the most vulnerable in society? And at the same time, failing to um, carefully measure and control what's going out through the media on a worldwide scale not just in Ireland so this has to be controlled this has to be measured if the government of Ireland is to uphold the integrity of the constitution if they're to uphold the law if they're to recognise and submit to what science says and what the Irish Constitution says in its preamble. If we are to refer to the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, to get our definitions so that we can properly structure society as it has been shown to, for thousands of years to keep and maintain the integrity of that society in the way of true social order and relative peace. So that people are behaving in a harmless way towards one another not beheading, decapitating and dismembering babies that are still in the wombs of their, of their mothers. Travelling through the birth canal is not the definition of life. Having blood circulating the vascular system, oxygenating the cell, living cells, is life. It's that simple. The Irish Constitution has recognised it in 1983, acknowledged it, and therefore can't remove it. Because by nature of the right to life, it is one that is imprescriptible. It can't be removed. Can you imagine if you were able to just get a piece of paper and say, right, Mary across the road there no longer, no longer has the right to life. 
let's bring a referendum to remove her rights. That would be preposterous. It would be an abandonment of logic and reason and everything that is um, valued in humanity. But why can they do it to the most vulnerable uh, human beings that don't even have a voice yet? To, to say, please don't kill me. I didn't do anything wrong to you. Please don't kill me. Don't butcher me in the womb. I haven't done anything wrong. I want to see a puppy. I want to, I want to see a butterfly. I want to smell roses. I want to see a sunny day. I want to walk on the beach. Society says, no, dead. I want to go on a holiday next year. And the media are saying, well, for, science, for financial reasons, one might do it uh, for the, the fact that the, uh, the um, baby, the, it's the woman's body and she should decide with what, she, what she does with her body. These things are going against what is foundational to logic and to the protection of human beings. This is an abandonment of what science says and what Christianity has said, what society has agreed with for thousands of years in the way of protecting human beings. So they're now abandoning the law and science in order to bring about this treasonous activity so that they would encourage all throughout the society young women to murder their children and pay for the privilege and pay for for it they would call it a privilege to have access to such a service a service it's not a service it's murder so the the, the media needs to be regulated according to the Irish constitution according to what is recognised as provable by the empirical uh, scientific method as uh, regarded as um, good and true morality and, and, and good moral value and true social order. This has to be reined in, it has to be torn down for the stronghold over the nations that it is. It is nothing more than infanticide, genocide, homicide, it is vile how they have miseducated the youth so that they would grow up to think that it's something permissible and societally acceptable to butcher your own baby or have them butchered. In Jesus' name, let it be torn down if it be his will. Let them submit to the powers instituted on the earth by the Most High God. In Jesus' beautiful name. For the sake of the children. For the sake of humanity. For the sake of the young women. So that venomous, ravenous wolves can't come in and start giving them poisonous and toxic counsel to go and have their babies killed. and it should be recognised as such and they should be held accountable to the law of the land of course when they remove the death penalty for treason they're going to become more comfortable around committing it you might even get somebody to commit it if it's not the death penalty So they remove the death penalty for treason, then they commit it. That's, what's that's what has happened. Can you show me, according to the Constitution, how, that, how what I've said is not true? Can you show me, according to secular science and what's recognised in science and, and basic scientific uh, biology, um, how the right to the, the, that the baby in the womb doesn't have life? Can you show me, according to what the Irish Constitution recognises as fundamental to its integrity, the Bible, the Word of God himself, how the, the baby in the womb doesn't have life. When it says the life of the creature is the blood thereof, the baby has blood, the baby has its own body. The, 
t- telling a woman to talk about my body, my choice. It's not the woman's body being killed. So the baby in the womb must be protected because they have their own body. Do you see? It's time to wake up. I've kept this video as short as I could. But people need to recognize that they're breaking laws. They're committing high treason. They're misusing media to miseducate the masses on what is scientifically proven to be a living human being in the womb of its mother. As being a clump of cells merely. And then they come up with a litany of reasons and isolated instances where, uh, which are very rare to instruct how one should behave towards a living creature. Making it uh, publicly accessible to people to have their babies butchered because it's nothing short of butchery they get a knife and they dismember the baby they behead it and dismember it they bleed it out and kill it then it's a corpse then it's reasonable to say it's a lot of cells when it's dead not when it's living When the baby has blood coursing, it's not merely a clump of cells. That's why the blood coursing the body is the defining characteristic of it having life. That's why terminologies like bloodshed are synonymous and interchangeable with the death of a human being. Say, was there bloodshed? Meaning, was there death on the battlefield? You see how it works? So this is how we define what is life. This is how we hold people accountable to what is the law. This is how we tear down the strongholds which are set up opposed to what is the the power instituted by the Most High God. So let it be recognised that science says the baby in the womb has life. The Bible says the baby in the womb has life. Because a creature that has blood coursing oxygenating in a cell is living. Mammy's eating fertility. It's double homicide to kill a pregnant woman. Let it be recognized. Jesus is my king. Amen. Glory to the Lord. I'm angry. It's hard when you're doing something like this to stay calm. But it would serve nothing. It certainly wouldn't serve getting the message across to become angry. Physically. Who's going to speak up for the babies? Who's going to speak up for those mothers who are being cornered? Because they're the second most vulnerable, many of them. They've been miseducated. They've poisoned them through the media. And our forefathers had the foresight to know the potential for that to occur was there. And that, they, and so they wrote it into Article 40 to control, very carefully watch what they're talking about. And it should have been pulled up earlier on, nipped in the bud and said, what you're teaching there doesn't comply with the law, doesn't comply with the definition of life as it pertains to secular science and what is known scientifically doesn't comply with the biblical definition of life and so it cannot be constitutional the right to life of the pre-born baby is imprescriptible you therefore you can't bring a referendum to remove it it's imprescriptible it stays forever because god spoke that the baby in the womb has life life of the creature is the blood therein therefore you kill that baby you're murdering a human being How can you kill something that doesn't have life? They kill the baby in the womb. They just call it, they use a term to try and sanitize it, to, 
to make you, you know, think that it's some kind of just clinical procedure so that you can have some level of impunity or hold your head up as you walk down the road and not even enter into thinking, I've just murdered my baby. Because they want to hide the negative fallout of the sin so that it can be even rationalised. Well, this is perfectly fine. It's family planning. Eugenicists will even say, this is the self-evolution of mankind. We're beyond monkeys now. We can decide if we bring a baby to full term or not. No, what you're saying is you're deciding to butcher the baby and you're trying to call it something else. You're a murderer. And you need to come away from that or you're going to burn in hell forever. But God can forgive you if you've had an abortion. This is not a condemnation. We're condemning the activity, not the person. So you can come to Jesus. His doors are open to you. There's forgiveness for you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that one believes and is justified and it is with the mouth that one confesses and is saved. Blessings. Jesus loves you. Repent. He can forgive if you've had an abortion, so to speak. It's murder. But you didn't avoid becoming a mother. You're now a mother who had their baby murdered. Repent and turn to Jesus before it's too late. Blessings. I love you.